Greetings and welcome. My name is Guy Lemonyan. The title of this talk is The Truth About Nursing Care Plans. We hate them and we don't use them. I started my nursing career uh, in the Army as a medic. I became an Army nurse and in the civilian sector I've worked as a staff nurse, charge nurse, head nurse, nurse manager, program manager, and director of nursing. In education, I've worked as a nurse educator in two community colleges, at two universities, and an instructor at two private educational institutions. We hear this at nursing stations everywhere. I have too much paperwork. I don't have time to take care of my patients with all this paperwork. This is the era of evidence-based practice and we must ask ourselves how much paperwork is really necessary. The Joint Commission requires detailed individual care plans must be completed for each patient. Many nurses freely admit that they never use the written care plan when delivering patient care. Hospital administrators, eager for Joint Commission accreditation, reinforce these Joint Commission requirements in their hospital policies. The increasing demands of documentation is increasing nursing stress. I heard it through the grapevine that the American Nursing Association is going to try to bring some action to reduce the amount of nursing documentation. I actually hope this survey will support that effort. A little background. Prior to the 1970s, care plans were written in pencil on heavy forms in a car deck. There's a photo here for you. So the charge nurse brought this uh, car deck to report, gave report out of it. It had information on what treatments were needed to be given and what medications would be received by the patients. Care plans were written in just a small box on here and were very simple. HOH for hard of hearing, L hemi for a left hemiplegia, and feeder for patients that required assistance with meals are a few examples. Nursing diagnosis had not yet been invented. Diarrhea was simply called diarrhea. And here's a sample. So uh, you can see there's just a small area for the nursing care plan and date, medications, treatments, name, other information. So uh, this was enough uh, to direct patient care and tell all the increased requirements. Beginning with the literature review, I found not much evidence to support the use of nursing diagnosis or detailed care plans. And even our nursing process, ADPI, was not supported uh, by much research in the literature. So this survey was to examine the attitude of practicing nursing staff about nursing diagnosis and care planning. This was a survey method, and I used a sample of convenience. Uh, that is the hospital system in Northern Arizona where I'm working at the time. And the design was to collect uh, for 30 days or 100 responses whichever came first, and I designed a survey monkey uh, system to trap the data. And we received uh, 100 responses in less than the 30 days. What did we ask? Questions about time away from bedside for creating nursing care plans. The necessity of detailed written care plans. The influence of the Joint Commission on Nursing Care Planning the usefulness of written care plans in nursing school and the necessity of nursing diagnosis and the frequency of utilization of nursing care plans. We used a simple standard uh, Likert scale one to five. And here are the results. The survey finds most nurses agree that the time to write nursing care plans take them away from bedside. This was the strongest result. 4.21 out of five. They also thought that experienced nurses can effectively plan and care 
uh, without written detailed care plans, and that was four out of five. Many nurses agree that written care plans are helpful for nursing students, but I was surprised this was so low. Our nursing care planning for students is essential to help them learn nursing process and critical thinking. Few nurses thought that nursing diagnosis is essential to the delivery of patient care. They've been to nursing school, they know what to do. Why do I have to write it down? And most nurses say that they do not refer to patient care plans before providing patient care medications and treatments. The truth is, we write these things just to fulfill a requirement. It stays in a chart, uh, and we don't use it. And uh, if needed, here's the data table with, with the same information that I just discussed. Recommendations. One nursing documentation system, ADPI, includes the plan of care and the nursing note and reflects the nursing process. This system was reviewed by a Joint Commission nursing consultant and met the standards for outpatient nursing care. This system has not been reviewed for inpatient hospital use. I did find one article, but uh, it did not seem to have any approval by the Joint Commission. So an ADPI charting system looks like this. This is our basic nursing process we teach in nursing school. Assessment, what does the patient look like? What are their sounds, their vital signs? What is your nursing diagnosis? What is your plan? Can be simple, you don't have to write paragraphs. Intervention, what did you do during your shift and evaluation? What was the results of your nursing interventions? Another discussion in the literature has been uh, to return to a combined CARDEX care planning system. I don't think that'll work in our current uh, electronic record system. Why does nursing permit the Joint Commission to regulate our nursing practice? Specifically, why do they tell us how to do our nursing notes? The profession of nursing needs to gain control of, of our documentation systems. Also recommended as research to determine the effectiveness of nursing diagnosis and to compare various nursing care planning systems in this, the era of evidence-based practice. So let's prove it. Uh, here's additional contact information for me if, if needed. Uh, thank you for listening and let's make a difference. Goodbye.